let's create a new Flutter project. Alright, so here we've got our sample project. I'm going to just readjust this a little bit so we can take a look. This is our project structure. We've got our main Dart file here in the center. And as we can see, it's created an iOS folder and an Android folder. Within these folders, uh, we can see everything that's usually expected from an iOS application. You can see all the base <coughs> files, all the uh, plist files for configuration on iOS, and the same goes for Android. You've got your Gradle property files. You've got everything you need. Now, for application that we're going for the application we're going to do today. We don't really need to touch any iOS or Android code. We're going to completely stick to Dart, completely stick to Flutter. So first of all, I'm just going to clean up all of the code we have here as we are going to run it from scratch. So we have the material import, which we need for any Flutter app. And we have the main call of uh, the Dart script, which has run app, which essentially is the first and essential call to run a Flutter app. So we have our main class here, which is a stateless widget, and we will see that there are stateless widgets and stateful widgets. Obviously, as the name indicates, stateful widgets are widgets that have a state that is manageable, with which you can save variables, update it, uh, and have your application re-render its main view, or any view that uh, pertains to that state. So we have a home page here. Let's clear this up. Let's create this class we have here. I'm going to use a, one of the Android's live examples to create a new state for widget. Essentially, what this uh, code snippet did was make a declaration of a state for widget. This first class here is our configuration class. So, if we'd like to uh, initiate this class with uh, any variables that we may need, we will declare them up here. In this case, we won't be doing that. We're just going to have um, our main class here for the state and we're going to start creating something. So let's create a scaffold here. Uh, scaffold is uh, sort of like in, in HTML, the HTML tag that holds our whole view and it can take an app bar and this app bar in this case is exactly what you'd expect. It's going to be the top of our view. It's going to hold the title, it's going to hold the back button or a hamburger button to open a drawer or any other actions you may want to use there. But for now, we're just going to try it out and see what it does. So let's add a text here, as you already should expect. Everything in Flutter is a widget, and this is exactly what we do. We've got a scaffold, we've got an app bar widget, and we've got a text widget. And we're going to give it a body so we can actually see something. We already have our Android emulator running here, so I'm going to make the first build. The first build is going to take a few seconds, probably 50 to 20 seconds, but after that we're going to be using the hot restarts, the hot reloads that we can see here on the IDE. Hot restart is, and hot reload are really useful. Hot reload allows us to basically reset, re render the view we have without having to rebuild the whole application and hot restart will actually rebuild the application but not actually run a crate or any of the sort. It will just rebuilds the, your state of the current main view. So as you can see here, we have already an app bar with a title. We have uh, Hello World, which we declared down here. This is looking a bit strange because it's all to the left. We don't have anything centered. It's not exactly the best looking thing. So I'm going to clean up some code here. And on top of that, I'm going to change the colors here because I prefer to use orange. So that's exactly what we're doing. I saved. When I saved, it essentially did hot reload and updated our view. Now I'm going to make one slight change here, which is I'm going to say that I want to center my title. So now we want a list since we said that we'd like to have a list of to dos. We want to be able to list items, add items, change items, delete items, and edit items. So let's do exactly that. Let's open up here again. And now we want to be able to use a list. So fortunately, there's a nice little widget called list view. And our list view typically asks for children. 
which are it's a list of widgets. So we're gonna do exactly that. We're gonna give it a few widgets. Widget text. I'm gonna put item one and I'm just gonna duplicate this a few times. There we go. Well, we've got a list of items. Using just text, we have nothing more than just a simple list that doesn't actually have any padding. It's difficult to see, it's not very useful. So let's change that and let's use a different widget. Flutter has a lot of interesting widgets and the one we're gonna pick to use is the list style. List style has a lot of useful properties and the list style is essentially a tile that contains a title, a subtitle, um, it has a space for a trailing widget or a leading widget, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna add a title, it expects uh, some widget, in this case we're gonna use text as we did before. I'm gonna again duplicate this so we can take a look at more than one and let's see what happens. All right, we've got some proper spacing, some proper padding, it looks a bit nicer, uh, but if it's supposed to be a uh, to-do list, uh, to-do app, so we want to have something a bit nicer here. So we're going to add a trailing and let's add an icon. So again, there's a widget for icons and we have constants with icons. And in this case, we're going to use a checkbox. Let's see what this does. Well, we have a nice checkbox here. It doesn't really do anything yet, but it is properly aligned. It's got some nice padding. It's starting to look a little bit like a list. Now, list style has another thing we can do. So the on tap expects a callback, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to give it a callback, and which we're just printing item one. So you'll notice that once I press here, we've got a wick an ink well animation, and we can see that it's printing out item one. The other two list tiles we had here below have nothing because they don't have a callback they also not showing an animation. We have a list tile, we have a list of list tiles, but this is not dynamic. This is just some text we're putting here, so we need to do something a bit more interesting. Now, I could put this in a new file, but just for the sake of us being able to read this easily, I'm gonna create a new class just right down here. So I'm gonna create a class called to-do, uh, which is what we're gonna use to control our to-dos. And this class to-do is gonna have a string, which is gonna be the title, and we're going to have a boolean which is going to tell us if it's complete or not. I'm going to put here a constructor and it will take two optional parameters which are the ones we declared upstairs which is title and complete. Now if you think about it, I'm just going to break this up a little bit here, if you think about it anytime you're going to create a new task or in this case a new to do, it's not going to com be complete the moment you start it. That doesn't make any sense. So we're gonna say it's gonna be false. This means that anytime we're gonna instantiate a new to-do object, it's already gonna have, uh, its complete status is false, which is gonna be useful for a new item. So now, we're gonna have a dynamic list, and right now we just have a static list, so hard coded. So let's do exactly that. Let's declare up here a list, and since we've already declared our class, we're gonna have a list of to-dos. We're going to call it list, and it's going to be a list of type to do's as we've declared. And we're just going to go into initialize it here. And there we go, we have a new list. Now, we have our list and we have our list view, but our list view is not really going through our list, and our list is empty as well. So, since we are in a stateful widget, we can override a method called init state. This is the method where we can initialize new things that were not available to us before. And since we have a list, but it's empty, I'm gonna add a few to-dos. I'm gonna use our class, pass them a title and say item one, or actually just item A. Do this a few times, let's B and C. But now, this really is not gonna change anything because our list view is completely hard-coded. So we're gonna use something else. We have a list view, but there is an alternate constructor, which is a builder. Now, if you'll notice, this is giving us an error saying this isn't defined. It's because this builder constructor doesn't really take children. It will take something different, which in this case is an item builder. So in our item builder, we, it expects us to give it a function, 
which will give us a context and an index because it works like a for loop so we'll be able to every time it runs be able to tell which index it's in and now we'll be able to return a list tiled but instead of giving them static text we're going to access our list the index we're currently in and the title that it has so this is going to look a bit more interesting and on top of that let's just change this here so we can actually play around with it but now we have an error why do we have that well the main reason here is because like in a for loop we need to tell it when it should stop so let's come here let's go to list and give the length okay so now it's empty well why is it empty because we did a hard reload and the hard reload does not restart the state it knows we have a variable but we haven't restarted the state so these items haven't been loaded in so we get a hot restart so we now have uh, our three items a b and c as we hear they all have clicks and they're all printing out what we expect them to print all right so we're starting to have something that looks like a list of items although these checkboxes here aren't really doing anything we need to change a little bit of what's going on here 